This is part two of the tutorial on operating the simple digital computer, the Simco. In this tutorial series, we are following the operation of a program that uh, is a burglar alarm program that sounds an alarm whenever our window is open. We actually have a line uh, running from uh, the window to bit one of memory address 11, which is input. When the window is open, uh, the, the, the line will go high, bit one will, will turn on, and um, that'll let our program know that the window is open. Uh, we have a, a flow chart here, basically, that the, uh, from the start, the first thing we do is check if the window is open, which will correspond to bit one on input. Uh, in our, our pseudocode here, we have memory address zero, it's clearing the accumulator, so we're checking. What we're going to do next is we're going to add uh, the value stored at memory address 11, which uh, re reflects the window being open or closed. When the window is open, bit one is one. We're going to add whatever value is at memory address 11 to the accumulator. So if the window is open, then we'll be adding a, a one. The the next thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract uh, a one from the accumulator. Uh, so if the window is open, what happens is we end up with a zero in the accumulator again. If the window is closed, we'd end up with a minus one. Uh, then we jump on zero. So if the accumulator is uh, zero, meaning the window is open, we're going to jump to address seven, uh, where we'll turn on a buzzer following our flow, uh, our flow chart. Window is open, we turn on buzzer. If it's not, we're going to turn off the buzzer. So, assuming the window is open, what we'll do is we're going to add a 1. Uh, I have a, a, a line label here, const1. This refers to uh, address 10 in memory, which just stores a, a value of 1. We're going to add that back to our accumulator, and we're going to write that out to uh, a memory address output, which happens to be memory address 12, which uh, the, the the ninth bit of this memory address uh, feeds into an alarm. So if we write a 1, then suddenly the, the alarm, the buzzer, sounds. If we write a 0, then uh, that turns off the buzzer. So assuming the window is open and, and the alarm turns on, we write a 1 to the output. Next thing we do is we jump back to 0 and uh, Again, we're checking the window. Uh, the alarm stays up. Uh, a, a one stays on our memory address, our output memory address, until the window is uh, shut. When it is, we turn off the buzzer. Um, that's how this program works. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we followed uh, just the fetch operation of the computer, where we loaded this clear accumulator uh, command into the instruction register of the computer. Um, when we did that, we ended up in time 7 with our, our fetch line on at, at T7 uh, in our subcommand generator. The only line that will turn on is to tr the uh, control line to trigger the fetch execute flip-flop. Uh, this line feeds into both the J and K uh, inputs of our JK falling edge flip-flop. When both lines are high and the clock line falls, which it will, uh, this toggles the output of the flip-flop. So it was, uh, uh, the, the fetch line was 1, execute line was 0. It toggles when the uh, clock line falls from to uh, the execute line being on 0, 1. Uh, and a moment later, the the timing decoder decodes uh, from T7 to T0, turning our T0 line on, and we're now in the execute execute mode, and we have the clear accumulator instruction was loaded in from the fetch operation. So the clear accumulator control line is high. We're in execute and we're in T0. If you follow down uh, in the subcommand generator array, we see the uh, clear accumulator line and the execute and T0 all feed into uh, the, the AND gate, which decodes for write a zero to the accumulator and short clear the accumulator. So there's only one uh, 
instruction to actually clear the accumulator. That's to turn on the uh, uh, place zero into the accumulator control line. We follow the control line down, and it feeds into our accumulator. Actually, uh, feeds into an OR gate, which leads into the K input of each of the bits in the accumulator register, and, and the J will have a zero on it. The reason it'll have a zero on it is because it's an AND gate feeds into it and one of the control lines uh, from a, a separate command, the, the command to actually add what's in the exchange register to the accumulator and write it back to the accumulator. Uh, that, li that control line is currently turned off. So there's going to be zeros feeding into the J inputs and ones feeding into the K inputs for every bit in the accumulator register. Uh, the line is, is currently high at T0 the second the clock line falls and suddenly you have zeros being, uh, being written to every uh, output bit in the accumulator, effectively clearing the accumulator or uh, setting all bits to zero. Um, so I'll go ahead and put a zero next to the Q of every bit in the accumulator and uh, um, the clock line falls a moment later the decoder uh, decodes from T0 to T1 and we're still in the clear accumulator instruction. There are no more commands to clear the accumulator. So it continues to uh, toggle through from T1 straight to T7. Uh, at T7 again, the trigger fetch execute flip-flop flip -flop control line comes on uh, and the clock line falls. It toggles the, the state of the computer from execute back to fetch. Uh, and then a moment later, T0 turns off, and t so that that control line turns off, and the uh, the timing decoder goes from T7 back to T0, and we are now back in the fetch state. Fetch line is high in T0 and for fetch in T0 this decodes to load what's uh, in the location counter into the memory address register. Uh, well, From the previous uh, tutorial what we had followed was that uh, every, every, when this computer is turned on it's assumed that every register in the accumulator is zero with the exception of the uh, the fetch execute flip flop, which starts off with one, so we start off in the fetch mode. Uh, so the location counter at zero, and at the end of the fetch uh, of the the fetch operations, the last control line to turn on is to add one back to the accumulator. So now we effectively have a location counter it is pointing to memory address one, which is going to be our our add uh, our add command add what's in uh, input. So uh, we have 000, which decodes to the add instruction, and input uh, is address memory 11, which is 1011. So uh, in memory, at memory address 1, we have 000, zero, zero then 0, zero 1, Zero, one, one. Um, again, we have the lo load what's in the location counter to the memory address register. Line is high, and uh, bits uh, binary one is feeding from the location counter into the memory address register. So, uh, for the first five bits, zeros are feeding in and the last bit a 1 is feeding in uh, when the clock line falls we now have a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 on the memory address register and this feeds into a decoder which turns a, a memory 1 line high so memory 1 line goes high which uh, and then uh, a moment later, the, the, the clock line falls, which will write uh, 
the contents of memory address 1, which was 00001011, or add uh, to the accumulator the, the value at address 11, or the input address, that'll now be on our memory address uh, output lines. Zero. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, one. When the clock line falls, a moment later, we go from T0 to T1. which turns on our move uh, the contents of memory has been loaded uh, from memory address 1 into the exchange register that control line goes high and this feeds in to a series of AND gates which feed into our exchange register the inputs of these AND gates are the output of RAM of our memory address register lines which will be the 0000001011 those all feed in to AND gates and because uh, the inputs to these AND gates also uh, have the input of the control line the move the contents of memory into the exchange register because that's high these all end up as inputs onto our exchange register when the clock line falls, they end up being written to the output of the exchange register. So we know we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, written onto the exchange register. Uh, after, the, after the clock line falls, then a moment later, uh, the line goes to T2, which is to uh, move the contents, uh, the opcode contents, or the uh, first uh, three bits of the exchange register into the instruction register, which will in turn decode into the instruction to add the contents of the accumulator to the exchange register and right back to the accumulator. Add what's in the value of input to the accumulator. So the load the op code portion of the exchange register line goes high. This feeds into the clock input of the instruction register just like in our fetch tutorial and we have 0 0 0 on the J inputs a moment later the clock line falls uh, when it does the control line moves into add the address portion of the exchange register back to the memory address register and uh, as it as the control line switches from the previous uh, control line which is move the operation portion of the exchange register into the instruction register to the next control line the uh, clock input into the instruction register falls and the uh, instruction to add the value from memory to the accumulator is now written onto the output of the instruction register. Uh, this in turn turns our add line high and just like in the tutorial on loading on the fetch operation of the computer uh, the next thing that's going to happen is the address portion of uh, this instruction to add is going to be loaded into the memory address register now. Um, that's uh, address 11 is going to be written back to the memory address register. So the memory address register line 